All right, I show 1 p.m. on my clock and therefore we are ready to uh, open today's judiciary meeting on Tuesday, February 16th. Uh, previously, we had two bills agendized for today. One of them has been moved to next week. Today, we will only be hearing SB 42. I would like to remind anybody and everybody who is watching from afar that they can uh, submit their written comments online uh, via email to my committee secretary or my committee manager. You can also fill out the online poll. And if you wanna call in, uh, you have to click on the button that says participate next to the agenda item. And then you can register with your name and your email and your phone number. You'll receive a phone number to call in. I see that we already have our presenters here today. Um, but before we get to the bill, I will be asking our esteemed secretary to call the roll. Thank you. Vice Chair Canizaro. Um, Senator Canizaro is running a little bit late today, so I will let you know when she's present. Please mark her present when you see her arrive. Thank you. Senator Orenshaw. Present. Senator Harris. Here. Senator Settlemeyer. It looks like Senator Settlemeyer is also running late today, so I would ask that you mark him present as well when he arrives, and I will do my best to let you know when I see him. Thank you. Senator Hansen. Here. Senator Pickard. Here. Chair Scheibel. And with that, we are ready to open up the hearing on SB 42. Um, I understand that Mr. John McCormick is with us from the Nevada Supreme Court to present the bill. Uh, thank you, Chair and members of the committee. Again, for the record, my name is John McCormick. Last name is M-C-C-O-R-M-I-C-K. Uh, I'm the Assistant Court Administrator at the Supreme Court AOC. And um, as you indicated, I'm here to present Senate Bill 42 today. Uh, this bill um, transfers the responsibility for printing, distributing Nevada reports, so the uh, recorded decisions of the Supreme Court, advance opinions of both the Supreme Court and the Court of Appeals, as well as court rules from the Legislative Council Bureau to the Supreme Court. Um, it appears that that change was made in the, the mid to late 60s, and I don't actually know why I did not um, pull those legislative histories, but this is, is kind of a cleanup measure to bring that responsibility uh, back to the court. Um, it also would eliminate the statutory requirement that 750 hard copies of each edition of the Nevada reports have to be printed and would give discretion to the Chief Justice to determine the number necessary to print. Uh, currently, uh, we print 750 uh, with state printing and end up storing a lot of those uh, in their warehouse, so just taking up space. Um, this fiscal year, the, the total for that printing cost is $28,832. So we're hoping uh, with approval of this measure that that would result in some savings to the state um, and and as well as some saving of storage space and, and obviously not generating books that nobody uh, seemingly wants. Um, this bill also allows distribution of those uh, Nevada reports, advanced opinions and court rules in paper and electronic format to help meet the needs of the recipients. We're finding uh, increasingly that people tend to want uh, this information electronically rather than in hard copy, but both would obviously still be available. Um, while the, there's those changes, those sort of cleanup changes, um, practically this bill would not have a, a tremendous impact aside from transferring that responsibility. I've uh, had discussions with the director of the Legislative Council Bureau, and we're committed to continuing to share uh, all this information and continuing to collaborate to make sure the information is available um, to the end users and the citizens in the state. Um, and hopefully by allowing greater electronic distribution, this would increase access, not, not make it less accessible. Um, currently, there's a list of people who get uh, copies of these various uh, 
decisions and rules um, for free in statute and all those folks are maintained as receiving free copies and the Legislative Council Bureau is added as another recipient who gets them for free. Um, this is generally not a money-making enterprise. It hasn't been for LCB, um, nor, and we don't necessarily envision it for the court, but it does change the account that any revenue from selling these uh, go, um, <clears throat> goes to, uh, to being an account for the use of the Supreme Court. Um, also, in addition to these sort of publishing changes, Senate Bill 42 in Section 8 eliminates a statutory requirement that currently exists in Chapter 3 uh, that the Supreme Court require training on um, medical malpractice, uh, professional liability for district court judges by court rule. Um, that requirement was added in 2005 um, during the special session when um, Nevada was experiencing sort of the, the doctor uh, medical insurance crisis. Um, and that statutory requirement is not necessarily needed anymore because uh, medical uh, issues and professional liability are both considered core competencies under um, the umbrella of judicial knowledge in our um, formalized training plan matrix, whatever you want to call it for district court judges. Um, and it, they get training on those topics every two to three years. We did have training on medical malpractice um, during our, what was going to be an in-person district judge seminar last year, but became our first uh, virtual seminar. And um, the district judges education committee can ask uh, our judicial education department to put on that training um, whenever uh, they judge it necessary. So it's been formalized and incorporated in our ongoing training plans to make sure district court judges have adequate training and information regarding medical malpractice issues. Um, also, as we're seeing increased specialization, particularly in our urban courts, I think there's more judicial experience to handle these type of cases, uh, particularly in Clark and Washoe counties. Uh, it was my understanding that, that uh, there were some uh, lawyer groups that were a little concerned about this, but I believe uh, our current um, incorporation of medical malpractice issues into our training regime was explained that, that they're uh, satisfied that, that that is sufficient as far as that training for um, district court judges. Uh, with that, I didn't plan on going into a section by section um, presentation of the bill since it kind of just is moving things from like chapter 345 and some legislative chapters to uh, chapter two, um, where the statutory uh, provisions regarding the Supreme Court reside. With that, I'd be happy to take questions. Thank you so much, Mr. McCormick. Um, and if the secretary could please note that Senator Settlemyer is now present. It looks like a couple of members have questions. We will start with Senator Harris. Thank you, Chair Scheibel. So I, I have two questions. <clears throat> One, uh, why do you guys want it back, right? If somebody else, it's very rare that someone wants to bring something back in house that somebody else is doing on their behalf. So I'm wondering why, why what's the benefit or what's the, um, I guess the, the reason for the move, um, even if we don't know the reason why it was taken from you in the first place, I'm wondering why, why you want it back. Um, and then I'll just ask my, my second question. You could probably address both at the same time. Um, on the repeal, I, I'm wondering, is this part of the standard practice now because you have the section and so you made it part of the standard practice, but if we get rid of the section that could fall out at any point. Uh, thank you, Senator, again, for the record, John McCormick. Um, the Supreme Court <coughs> uh, discussed this and um, I believe they, they kind of want to bring this back in house because they think it's more appropriate for the court to be the entity that's publishing and distributing its decisions. We also think that we'll be able to uh, achieve that cost savings that I mentioned by removing that statutory, uh, man statutorily mandated amount of hard copies. So uh, the court, again, I think, just determined that, that they thought it was more appropriate for the, the court to be handling uh, those decisions. And as far as that training, um, the, 
I think medical malpractice is going to be an issue for district courts that will require training. And I don't think that it would go away because the statutory um, provision uh, was repealed. I think it, it cleans up statute and makes it, uh, excuse me, um, I think it cleans up statute. And I also think that there are a number of topics that uh, we train on that are not necessarily required by statute, but obviously are still best practice, good practice to have judges getting trained on um, for uh, to handle their various caseloads. So I don't believe that that repealing the statute would have any impact on that training plan that was put together. We had a committee um, a few years back, and I would have to look for the actual um, Time frame of district judges that came together to develop these core competencies, including these uh, key topics in medical malpractice, was one of those decided on by the district court judges. So I think the value of training in that is recognized by the community of users, basically. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, Senator Orenshaw. Thank you, Chair Scheibel, and thank you, Mr. McCormick, for presenting this bill. I, I guess my only concern is, uh, you know, for for litigants who can't afford to hire an attorney, and you know, so often are down at a law library trying to, you know, go forward on their own, pro se. Do you think that with if this change becomes law, the rules and the information that they need will still be available to them in law libraries around the state, in terms of if, if they have to go to court on them on their own and litigate pro se? Uh, thank you, Senator, again, for the record, John McCormick. Um, law, all the law libraries in the state receive copies of these rules, advanced opinions and reports currently uh, at no charge, and that requirement stays the same. Um, so uh, hopefully, in terms of law libraries, the, the same availability will be maintained. We, we see it as being seamless there. It'll just be who's sending the information to the libraries, whether or not it's LCB or the Supreme Court. Hopefully, with uh, also with the allowance here to allow electronic publication, not just uh, hard copy. Obviously, we make things available on our website, but I think uh, in combination between the Supreme Court being the, for lack of a better term, owners of the information rather than LCB. Um, will allow us to publish further electronically. I've had some discussions with our law library and there was some concern about copyright because this stuff technically belonged to LCB. Um, but I believe if this has any effect, it should make that information hopefully more available, uh, particularly on the internet and uh, in electronic format. Thank you, Mr. McCormick. Thank you, Chair Schreiber. Absolutely. And Senator Pickard. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just a couple of quick questions. Uh, I kind of reacted, I think, similarly to uh, uh, Senator Harris in that uh, uh, this printing and, and distributing of printed material is probably not uh, the uh, Supreme Court's primary role. So uh, I was a little surprised that you would take this from the division of the state that its existence is to print and distribute printed material. Um, uh, so I'm wondering, is this because this is viewed as a potential profit center? Or this is something because now you're taking the ability to, to sell these things, which would normally revert to the general fund, as we do with other things, you know, in Sunset Subcommittee, uh, any fines, any uh, penalties, any assessments uh, laid on, on market participants, are required to go to the general fund and not for the the uh, use of the organization that is charging it. Um, uh, you know, it, it, how is the uh, the court going to be handling uh, printing and sales when that's never been part of their their core uh, duties? Um, I, thank you, uh, Senator. For the record, John McCormick. Um, as far as printing, I believe we intend on maintaining our relationship with state printing. Um, and again, having them print for us, I it would just sort of change the, the machinations of where the money goes. As far as uh, revenue from this, I don't necessarily envision it being a, a tremendous amount of revenue. And I, I have to say that I don't necessarily know 
how much LCB currently gets. But again, if if uh, uh, the court was more concerned with the cost saving aspect of this rather than the revenue generating aspect. So if the committee were to decide that went to the general fund, I'm, I'm sure the court would be fine with it. All right, uh, if I can follow up, Madam Chair. Thank you. I guess uh, uh, if what you're saying or what I'm understanding you to say is that the uh, ultimate uh, machinations are actually not changing. You're gonna continue to use the state printing office this is about where the money goes. Um, uh, so wouldn't, or for the cost savings rather, um, wouldn't it make more sense then to just reduce the number of required uh, um, or, or eliminate a requirement for a number of printed copies, leave everything else the same and just say, you know, the Supreme Court will determine how many printed copies uh, it needs and, 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 you know, we avoid some of the changes here. I'm just, my concern is because we don't know why we made this change in the 60s in the first place are we stepping back into a situation that they corrected in the 60s and we just don't know we're stepping into that uh into that minefield uh thank you senator again for the record john mccormick again um i believe part of the supreme court's concern on this made matter was uh the court performing the function of distributing its decisions and court rules um and as far as stepping back into that, again, I, I was remiss in not adequately researching why the, the change was made in the first place. But again, I think the Supreme Court had that concern about, I guess, for lack of a better term, ownership of this and, and bringing those, the, gen, the publication of the, these records sort of back where they came from, for lack of a better term. Um, and again, uh, the statutory requirement for 750 sets um again if that was the prerogative of the committee to to make some changes regarding that or or um you know take pieces and parts of this that again i think would be the, the prerogative of the legislature i, I appreciate that I, I just think it would be helpful for us to know uh why we made the change and and uh, if maybe the better way to do this would be just to remove the the printing requirement and leave that up to the discretion of the court and uh, otherwise if it ain't broke don't fix it uh, anyway thank you madam chair i appreciate that all right i don't see any other questions from members of the committee so uh that concludes the presentation we will open up um, for testimony in support of sb 42. thank you chair at this time, the public line is open and working. However, there are no callers in line. All right, then. We will uh, close testimony in support of SB 42 and open up testimony in opposition to SB 42. Thank you, Chair. The public line is still currently open and working. However, there are no callers in opposition at this time. Then we will close testimony in opposition to SB 42 and open it up for testimony in the neutral position on SB 42. Thank you, Chair. The public line, excuse me, is still open and working. However, there are no callers in neutral support at this time. Neutral testimony, rather, excuse me. Okay, then that concludes our hearing on SB 42. I will close the hearing and move on to the last item on our agenda, which is public comment. Um, is there anybody wishing to give public comment? Thank you, Chair. There is no one to give public comment at this time. All right. Then um, I believe that concludes our meeting. I appreciate everybody's attendance. And uh, we will be meeting again tomorrow at 1 p.m. Excuse me, Chair. A bit longer. We have... Yes. Yes. Did Senator Canazaro show an appearance? I do not see Senator Canazaro here. You can mark her absence as excused though. Thank you. Absolutely. And with that, um, we will be adjourned until tomorrow at 1 p.m. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>